how to make money in jujitsu. Let's talk about this, right? Because again, you see Gordon Ryan post his fanatics checks on his Instagram. You see Tynan driving around in a Porsche. You see Ethan Kralenstein driving around in a 40-year-old Toyota. And you think to yourself, gee, how much money is there to be made in jujitsu? We're going to kind of go through it here because um, I have to imagine I'm probably the most, uh, I probably made the most money as the least accomplished athlete in the sport. So I want to give you guys uh, an indication into how much money you can make off certain things. Uh, but again, I want to emphasize this, that like you could win an ADCC gold medal. You might not sell a seminar. You might not sell an instructional. Just winning the medals doesn't mean people are going to care about you, right? So like, let's go through it in sort of, the pace at which uh, you would start making money in the sport. So obviously, when you you might hit a purple belt if you're in a small gym, you might start teaching classes and stuff. You would be shocked at how little money you might get paid to teach a class. You might not even get paid to teach. Some people just want to teach because it gives you access to the clients uh, in which you can sell private lessons to. But a lot of these gyms, uh, they might not pay up and comers to teach because they'll offer them free membership in exchange for those classes. But there's black belt world champions out there that'll make 25 US dollars a class. Um, at our gym, we have a broad range of um, payment structures. We pay people up to 75 US a class, which although Reddit doesn't think it's good, that's fucking good for an instructor to get paid 75 US a class. But to emphasize this, there's no future in your career unless you open your own gym, run your own business. You will never be comfortable, make enough money to live in this sport if you just work for someone else. It works well in the short term because you can teach, you can make enough money to live and you will not um, have to deal with all the stresses of being the boss of the gym and stuff. Running a gym is horrible. Dealing with you people is fucking horrible. Sometimes it might be better to take a pay cut and just teach classes, less stress involved. But again, you will never make any real money if you're doing that. Private lessons. If you're an, a nobody purple belt, you might make $50 a private and you might have to give 25% of that back to the gym owner to pay overheads. Again, if your gym owner likes you, we might not make you do that. But again, a lot of people do. B team, we don't take any cut of our guys' privates. We leave it all to them. We rob them in other ways they wouldn't even begin to understand. But again, you some of these private lessons will range up. For me, $1,000 plus, sometimes 1500 sometimes 2000 Depends how tired I am that day. Depends how energized you are. Depends on what you want to do with me in that private. I feel like a high price escort sometimes. You know, you book me for the hour. I cannot wait for 10. I cannot wait to wash your sweat off me when the hour's up. I have to pretend to be super kind throughout the private. Basically, uh, a private lesson with a black belt is going to be like you're paying for a high price escort, you know. But again, it's weird. Some people want to pay for privacy learn techniques some people just want validation they just want me to they want to show me shit and maybe like whoa i've never seen that before you are absolutely brilliant so what you get out of a private lesson very different things very different things you know seminars let's talk about seminars uh <clears throat> initially when you start teaching seminars it's always going to be flat right the gym owner is going to say hey i'm going to pay you x amount um no matter how many people come to the seminar that's how most people start. That's how I started. I remember one time I negotiated a deal for like $1,500 flat rate. And then the total amount of people that showed up would have equated to $10,000 worth of money. So the gym owner took eight and a half. I took 1500 That was the end of the road for me where I said, hey, we're not doing this anymore. No more flat rate seminars. Always doing a split. For me, it's usually a 90-10 split. I'm confident I would sell out a seminar. So I negotiate a 90-10 split and I pay for my own expenses. I give the gym owner 10% just so they can um, they can make a little offer. You know what I mean? Obviously, some gym owners want you to come out just because it brings good marketing to their gym, bring, gives people awareness that their gym actually exists. If you're not confident you can sell big numbers at a seminar, you've got to do a flat rate. You've got to hope that the gym owner doesn't take a loss on that flat rate. If you don't get good numbers to a seminar, it's got nothing to do with the gym you're doing at. It's got nothing to do with the gym owner. You should be able to market your own seminars. People should be, you should be confident that people know who you are. They want to come to a seminar. If you can't sell 10, 15 people, if you got to convince 10, 15 people to come to your seminar, you probably shouldn't be doing seminars. That's more of a group private type of thing, you know? 
But in terms of profits, I've had seminars, single day seminars where I've made over $25,000, $30,000 single day seminars that are around the $10,000 mark. Again, if you don't do them often and you pump them up, you blow them up, you set up an event, right? It's easy for people to book. Again, these should be easy for people to book. Get with the time, set up an online page where they can buy a ticket, it has all the details there. If the seminars are posted that says contact the gym owner to buy a ticket, what are you doing? Who's doing that? You know what I mean? Take it away from the gym owner. You do it all yourself. But the money to be made off seminars are good. But again, it's inefficient use of your time because you go teach a seminar. That's the money you make for that amount of time. That doesn't change. Now we move on uh, in terms of teaching protocols to online stuff where for two to three hours of content creation, which is you teaching, that can make you money for years and years to come. But before we touch on that, because that's the ultimate, you're making instructionals, you've got online learning platforms, that's the ultimate. Let's talk about super fights, right? Because you won a gold medal in ADCC, because you won a gold medal at IBJJF Worlds, doesn't mean you deserve to get paid fucking anything in a super fight, right? Flow grappling, fight pass, these types of shows, they profit by selling new subscribers. So is your match going to sell them any new subscribers? That sort of understanding is what dictates how much money you deserve to be paid. And again, that might mean that you deserve to be paid zero dollars. If you bring no value to the show, if you bring no new subscribers to the show, if no people are tuning in to watch you, then you really don't deserve to be paid. You're being, uh, you are being shown as an athlete on a massive platform. If you're on like a Gordon Ryan undercard, man, that's massive exposure. And that's when I was coming up trying to make a name for myself, oftentimes I would compete for free on shows like Submission Underground because I would see it as an opportunity to expose myself to a new audience. And then I'd use that exposure to sell things like seminars and instructionals to people. So it's like a, it's a give and take. However, if you are a name, if people are gonna tune in for you, you're gonna get paid. Some of these shows will pay guys as low as 1500 to show, 500 to win, maybe even throw in a submission bonus. They want a submission. Again, we all want a submission. We want to submit the other guy. It's, it's not like we're not trying to submit and we know that's going to ultimately bring more attention to us. More people want to watch the finish. But you could compete for flow or five, but you get as low as $1,000 to $1,500. You could get as high as $150,000. So there's a huge window there. And again, no matter how many gold medals you have, that doesn't mean you're going to fall on this end of the spectrum. It's your ability to sell the show. That's basically what's happening here. So again, little things. If you have YouTube channel, lots of subscribers, you have a big social media following, that's your audience. That's a captive audience. That's an audience that Flow Grappling and Fight Pass can look at and they can say, wow, look at all these people that follow this guy. Even guys like Dylan Dennis have massive reach. If they book Dylan Dennis on a show, he posts that on his platform. That is now advertised to that many people. That many people are now interested in seeing this match take place. So again, you have no social media following. You're not working on a YouTube channel. Don't demand big money because you don't deserve it. And to those guys out there that say things like, oh, I don't like doing social media. No one fucking does unless you're an absolute psychopath. No one does. It's part of the business. And if you want to make money, you do it. You learn how to do it. You learn how to market yourself. Social media is just a free way to market yourself. So don't say you don't like doing it. Nobody likes doing it. They just get better at it and it's easier for them to do, but it takes practice. You have to put yourself out there. If you're too scared to put yourself out there on social media, no one's ever going to care about you making a super fight anyway. Because this, I mean, at the end of the day, the highest paid guys are sports entertainment. The guys that are entertaining, that are characters, the people are invested in, are going to get paid the most money. Obviously, there's figures in the sport like Gordon that are the best and they have the most attention. You could be one or the other. You could be the best and no one really cares, or you could not be very good and everyone cares and still make good money. Before we get to online learning platforms, we'll talk about sponsorships. Again, sponsorships falls in the same vein as Superfight payments. You know what I mean? If I own a company and I want that company, uh, 
I want to get that company some exposure. I pick an athlete with a following. I pick an athlete that at least creates content. You know what I mean? I'm not going to pick an athlete that I'm going to send him a fucking kimono and he's going to take a photo of it and post on his story and be like, thanks, Hyperflight. You know, that's the lowest form of advertising you, the brand that's supporting you. You know, that's them giving you charity here. And if that's the type of um, marketing you're doing, then you don't deserve any money from that company. You really... Maybe you deserve the product because you're exposing it. You know what I mean? But that's the lowest form of marketing a man can do. You want to create interesting content where you happen to be in the gear. When you compete in the gear, that is interesting content. But that's not the end of the road for creating interesting content. You can make technique videos, funny videos, fucking stupid TikTok dance videos. Create interesting content that you just happen to be wearing the gear. That's how you market the brands that want to support you. And again, you could be selling supplements. You could be selling TRT protocols. Shout out to Evertitan. All those things are available to you. But again, it's not charity. If no one cares about you, you shouldn't be sponsored. It's not a charity. And if you do get sponsored without any social media following at all, that guy's a nice guy. He cares about jujitsu, but you can't expect to have a career and make much money in the world living off of other people's charity and goodwill. <clears throat> now let's talk about the biggest money makers in the sport. Most guys will probably start with a subscription model, you know, like you're gonna start with a Patreon, something like that. That's gonna cross the bridge before you hit the peak of BJJ Fanatics. But when you do these subscription models, obviously they're gonna take a cut, they might take 20%. I was on OnlyFans, OnlyFans took 25%. I made some good money on OnlyFans, but it took a lot of work, it took a lot of work. I was sending out underwear for $500 a pop. Obviously we all don't have that luxury we had to stop that unfortunately when a guy was asking for some certain type of stains on that underwear it started to get me worried but even on OnlyFans I was sending out videos where I would slander I would shit talk people's training partners and stuff that was a good cash cow on there but again most people are going to use subscription model services like Patreon to release technique videos they're going to release them over time I know Jason Rao does this Levi Jones Leary does this Lachlan Giles has Submeta which BGJ which B team will be on very soon, right? So we have these subscription models, but you guys can't be lazy. You have to keep creating content on there. It's like people will stay subscribed, but you need to keep providing value. You can't disappear for six months. Then you haven't created new content. People aren't getting value out of their subscription service. They're going to heal it. Now the peak money maker for all jiu-jitsu athletes. Thank you, Michael Zanga. Thank you, Bernardo Ferrier is BJJ Fanatics. Now BJJ Fanatics, uh, you could make fucking no money or you could make incredible money this is the number one thing that's taken guys into complete uh they completely changed their life you know what i mean like before bj fanatics for me i was just doing seminars 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 75 85 seminars a year killing myself but obviously like i said now i can film for two days that product can continue to make me money forever it's an easier way for people to learn they don't have to travel to a seminar they can have the product and they can watch it as many times they want wherever they want but bjj fanatics is huge but again what create people people buy instructionals to solve a problem so you need to think of a way to create a product that solves a problem so it might be uh fundamentals it might be a position that's new that people are unfamiliar with that you can sort of provide some cutting edge answers on but again remember who does jujitsu over 35 year old lonely semi chubby white guys that's the the cream of the crop for the jiu-jitsu instructional market so obviously if you're going to be teaching insanely difficult high level movements that instruction is not going to sell massively you want something that everyone can do and you want to explain it in a way that everyone can understand if you can provide products like that people are really going to take notice. And again, if you have some basic ability to speak, a, a lot of people in jiu-jitsu can't even have a conversation with one another, let alone speak to a camera and convey a message in a way that's well thought out, detailed. A lot of jiu-jitsu guys dropped out of school, didn't go to college and university, you know, they don't have a great grasp of the English language. Some of the best sellers you might say have too good a grasp of the English language. We're hitting the fucking dictionary throughout these products. Again, there's probably a right balance there. But guys, BJJ Fanatics is a big cash cow. 
you can make, I know guys that make two to 4,000 a month off that. Some months, I know guys that are taking $150,000, $200,000 plus per month just off instructionals alone. So I think people underestimate how much money there is to be made, how big the sport is growing. It is a participant sport. People watch MMA. They're, they're not going to go and watch an MMA instructional. Anyone that watches jiu-jitsu is a potential buyer for BJ Fanatics instructional. Some guys buy them and don't even watch them. They like to say they have them. They like to understand the language being used in it so they appear knowledgeable in the jiu-jitsu uh, area. The jiu-jitsu market is very, very interesting. People pay memberships to a gym to go to that gym and try to help other people because it makes them feel good. They want to teach technique to others. A very interesting thing. Fanatics have filled that void. People are buying instructionals like crazy. We're in the gold rush. Hopefully it lasts forever. But guys, that's the peak of jiu-jitsu money making as an athlete. But again, we can't forget. We've got Gracie Baja. We've got Tenth Planet. I have to imagine those owners of those affiliations owning that school network. Baja, um, Carlos owns the IBJJF. That's probably the richest man in jiu-jitsu. So, I mean, it's an, it's an old school approach, just franchises and tournaments like that. But those, I imagine that's probably the richest guy in jiu-jitsu. I would love to cash out, do something like that. But for now, I'll keep peddling these instructionals.